Hi, and welcome to another Coffee with Connie. I'm here with uh, Executive Director of Sustainability Institute, Neil Lewis, and today we're going to talk about uh, carbon monoxide. Uh, we did in the town a sponsored resolution to make March Carbon Monoxide Awareness Month, and so Neil is going to talk to us about some of the uh, recommendations uh, that uh, the Sustainable Institute is making to make homes and businesses safer places to be. Okay, obviously because of the uh, tragedy in Huntington, uh, many towns and, and the state government is moving forward with requiring carbon monoxide detectors not only in residential areas but also in commercial. Um, but the Sustainability Institute is saying we need a more comprehensive approach. That's right. Can you describe why? Sure. Um, and of course, you came to our meeting of the mm -hmm. Clean Energy Leadership Task Force over at our offices at Republic Airport of the mm -hmm. um, Sustainability Institute at Malloy um, just the day before that terrible tragedy. Yes. Um, and uh, we were, mm -hmm. so it's not just because of the tragedy right. that we're talking about this, but it is not uncommon that in government sometimes people, yeah. you know, things react. And, sure. You know, it was actually 20 years ago, it was uh, 1994, that uh, Venus Gerolitis died. Uh, tennis celebrity right, yes. uh, that was on Long Island uh, yes. out, in, uh, yes. out in Southampton and he was staying at someone's house and was in the pool house yes. and um, somewhat unusual circumstances where he was exposed to carbon monoxide from a pool heater which goes to show you that anything that's a combustion source has mm -hmm. the potential to cause a carbon monoxide exposure problem they all give off carbon monoxide at some level mm -hmm. and we know from like superstorm sandy that we have to remind people of basic things we all know mm -hmm. which is you know don't bring that kind of uh, thing into your house like a generator that people are using for electricity during the storm right. recovery because it's given off carbon monoxide yes. it could kill you mm -hmm. but you don't smell it you don't uh, um, see it obviously as a gas it's sometimes called the invisible killer mm -hmm. um, it, uh, it still does kill a lot of people. So it's been 20 years since the Venus Gerolitis uh, incident. Uh, many states did act to mandate it, and New York is one of those states, but the mandate only applies to residences and to um, those commercial places where people sleep. And that is mandating carbon monoxide detectors. That's right. right. Um, and uh, those detectors are certified by Underwriters Laboratory, and they're designed to basically go off at a level where if it didn't go off, you might sleep and, and die never in your sleep, up. never right. wake up. Mm -hmm. um, but as you say, and we talked about at our meeting the day before this terrible incident, um, mm -hmm. was that uh, you can have a low level exposure to carbon monoxide mm -hmm. that can go on for a long period of time that you never notice because you really will not notice it. Um, and that can cause a range of illnesses. Mm -hmm. uh, so many people are walking around with severe migraines and they don't mm -hmm. understand why. Mm -hmm. um, cause nausea and uh, dizziness and um, really a range of things that sometimes yeah. called flu-like because right. the doctors just don't know what to make of it. Right. And it's more apt to happen in the winter because it, it could That's be related to heating systems. Yeah. The doors are all closed, the windows uh -huh. are closed, so the gas is more likely to be trapped. Mm -hmm. um, and so what we've been saying is, you know, it's a way of waking people up to the fact that perhaps your heating system is not being cleaned regularly as it mm -hmm. should every year you should have mm -hmm. to clean. Um, that maybe it's an old system that needs to be upgraded. Now, at, at what levels uh, would uh, uh, carbon monoxide make people sick? Not necessarily they're not going to die from it, right. but they have these flu-like systems. Uh, so what levels would that Well, it's, a, it's um, uh, several different agencies have given different numbers. So, for example, um, the OSHA, which is speaking from the perspective of workers, mm -hmm. says that in a workplace environment where we operate on normal rule of sort of an eight-hour exposure, um, they set a standard of 50 parts per million. Okay. Now recognize the alarm won't go off until 70 parts per million. And they say 50 parts per million is the maximum that a worker should be subjected to in a workplace environment. There's absolutely no way in which that's being enforced, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, but others have given lower numbers. So um, at 35 parts per million after an hour, 
anybody is likely to experience symptoms. Okay. But go down lower than that, at perhaps 30 or 25 parts per million, more sensitive uh, people are gonna experience symptoms. Now these more sensitive people, do they include infants, uh, older Absolutely, people? Absolutely, infants, and I've got okay. questions. Children? For, yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. I've gotten questions about, are schools required to have them? Uh -huh. Short answer, no. Wow. Which is crazy. That uh, is crazy. You know, healthcare, um, yeah facilities, mm -hmm. um, daycare facility, you know, they don't have any special requirement. Mm -hmm. uh, as it stands right now, if you don't sleep over in a building like a hotel, um, or maybe on a college campus with its dorms, there's a sleepover, then they're required to have it. But other than that, there's no carbon monoxide requirement today. Wow. And of course, we're hoping that's gonna change, and I know your town is mm -hmm. looking to make the change. Um, but you know, that num those numbers, you can go down as low as um, nine parts per million is the recommendation of the World Health Association. Really? So World Health says nine parts. Bottom line, it's a poison that really should not be in your mm -hmm. environment. Now, yes, there can be some circumstances, like if someone's cooking with gas heat. Mm -hmm. If it's electric heat, there's no issue. But right. gas, gas heat, stove. you do have a flame. You mm -hmm. do have a gas, you know, any gas yes. stove. I have gas. Lines. Okay, so there's definitely the risk mm -hmm. with gas stove. And if you're cooking with gas stove, there can be moments where there's going to be some yes. carbon monoxide. Right. That's okay. why they normally have a vent open, yep. by the way. Yep, People fan. think it's the no. um, yeah. the steam coming off the no. boiling water. No, it's actually the carbon monoxide. That's another monoxide. time I open the windows. That was uh, my husband you know. There you go. Well, <laughs> you know, you're right in the sense that we do want yeah. fresh air. And a lot yeah. of this is, a, is about air quality yeah. and we know from studies that people recuperate quicker in a hospital if there's good air quality that people learn better in a school yes. environment if there's good air quality and what's the opposite of good air quality well many times it's the presence of carbon monoxide it could be other things mm -hmm. just glue, glues that off gas from rugs and things like mm -hmm. that but really a lot of it is the question of carbon monoxide and um, really we should be eliminating that in our environment and first we need people to be empowered by knowing it's there and then second, what to do about it. And right. to do about it, uh, I know that you've been a strong advocate in the town of Brookhaven encouraging people to get home energy audits as yes. part of the Green Homes program. Mm -hmm. Well, the good thing about that Green Homes program, and I know we've gotten quite a few people in the town to have uh, home energy audits, is um, one of the first things they've done as part of the home energy audit is they test for carbon monoxide. Right. So that's a great way to find out if you mm -hmm. have this problem. Mm -hmm. um, I know, you know, some right. people, uh, it's the gas stove, and it comes back that that's, that's leaking. Right. Well, then just straight off I mean, we're, the stove. we're talking about green homes, and both of us are very, very uh, right. big advocates of, right. you know, green homes and conser conservation of energy. Um, but obviously, when you're tightening your home, um, there's less air coming in, that's and there's right. more of a chance for carbon monoxide. Right. That's, that's right. So. It's good to make your home more energy efficient. Yes. The tighter envelope is better. It's not drafty, all these benefits. But you still need fresh air. Right. And what is re when we did the uh, Energy Star Homes, the, yes. uh, it is required that the air come in from the boiler from the outside. That's right. So it lessens so that. So this uh, is a great thing. So all the homes that have been built, and I know this was the law that you and I worked on when you mm -hmm. first got elected, mm -hmm. so I like to point out it's your first law. Um, uh, so you know, you can back how many years you've been in office, how many years that law has been in effect. So all the homes that have been built since then um, have to comply with this law. And one of the good things about this law is no one will ever die the tragic experience. Uh, Steve Nelson, the, the manager at Legal Seafood, who died from exposure to the gas from, uh, from the system that was sort of backed up and, and not going out the food the way it should have been. Um, that will never happen with an Energy Star home when it comes to the heating system because it's such a tight home uh, and the heating system is so energy efficient that basically it's a sealed heating system unit that has a separate line that runs right through the wall to the outside to draw in its fresh air. Okay. Normally in a home that doesn't have that, the, um, the, the oil burner room, um, mm -hmm. if it has that designation, okay. will have a little vent on the door. So even when the door is closed, uh -huh. it's supposed to be allowing oxygen to be flowing into that room. You're not supposed to pile boxes and things like that in front of your heating system. That's not to prevent it from going on fire. That's to make sure you don't get carbon monoxide poisoning mm -hmm. because the lack of oxygen, most carbon monoxide is a result of incomplete combustion. So it didn't mm -hmm. burn completely. And so that's about oxygen coming in and burning, helping it to burn completely. Um, you can also get back drafts. Um, that problem uh, is addressed by the what we talked about with the new homes, uh, they will never have a backdraft problem because it's a sealed unit. Um, we would encourage people who have older heating systems 
to look at getting an Energy Star heating system because if they change to the Energy Star heating system, they never have to worry about this potential problem with carbon monoxide right. pollution. And they're going to get something that's much more energy efficient that will mm -hmm. save them a lot of money in the long mm -hmm. run. Even if it costs more upfront, which they do. We mm -hmm. always have to be honest with people about yes, the cost and benefits. Yep. There's an upfront cost, long-term savings, especially with a winter like the one we just had. Oh, yeah. um, you know, very, very cold, you're going to save a lot of money on your mm -hmm. heating. Um, but there is an upfront cost, but now here's another benefit. In addition to that energy savings, you also have something that gives you peace of mind in knowing that you will never have this carbon monoxide exposure. Yes, right. And even if someone doesn't die, if you have the carbon monoxide detected and you say, okay, we're protected against the potential of death, but there is this issue with the low level of exposures, and um, mm -hmm. we're saying there's two things you can do for that. One is to get a home energy audit done. Everybody should get a home energy audit mm -hmm. done, right? So they're free or very low cost. If you're in a higher income bracket, it's still low cost. And how do um, people do that if they don't know? Well, we encourage them to start by even go to the Haven website or go directly to Long Island Green Homes, all spelled out, dot org. And that website will walk you through the process. It's not too complicated. There are a few steps, but the town of Brookhaven has a person that you can call if you do get stuck and can help you walk through the process. But essentially, they they ask a few questions about your type of heating, whether it's oil or gas, um, some data about past energy use, and then when you punch all that in, you get a number from the state, from NYSERDA, which is a state agency, and that number gives you an ability to then sign up with a company and they have a mechanism where the companies are all certified companies, mm -hmm. they're licensed, insured, um, there's a mechanism for quality control, and they're sort of randomly mixed up when you click on the website, so each company gets a fair shot at okay. the customers. Mm -hmm. So you get a chance, the company will come in, they'll do an audit, and one of the things they're gonna do is test all your combustion systems. So if you have uh, you know, your heating, your hot water heater, your stove, if you have a gas mm -hmm. stove, all that, they'll take the, the yeah. carbon monoxide mm -hmm. detector right up to it. Um, and uh, so that's that's a great yeah. way to do it. Um, you know, I've been encouraging yeah. people to get carbon monoxide detectors that are not the standard one, but the one that has a little digital readout. Yes. And I brought one of them with me. Okay, let's you know, see it. Yeah. So, um, you know, not to promote any one brand, this happens uh -huh. to be First Alert. Uh, you can get it at Home Depot. And Lowe's. this plugs right in. It has a plug right, right. in the back. Okay. So the good thing about the plug is you can walk up to an outlet and just push it into the outlet, uh -huh. and you don't have to do anything more to mount it. Right. It'll just sit uh -huh. in the outlet, and it's there. Okay. Now, it does have mounts, so you could put it up higher, and you uh -huh. pull out the, the thing so the oh, wire would I run see. through. So you could do it that way. People think, oh, you know, with, with, um, with smoke detectors, you have to put them on the ceiling. Right. Because smoke rises. And they have a battery. And, the battery and they can be tricky that you're reaching up mm -hmm. to try and change right. the battery. Well, this has a battery backup ah. in it, in addition to the plug. Okay. So you get the best of both. And what's good about the battery where backup? Where do you get these? You can get them really anywhere. Home Depot, Lowe's. Huh? And you know what? They're not that expensive. Mm -hmm. And basically, you walk up to them. Let's test this you, here. Can we test this? You read, yes, <laughs> we can. <laughs> and fortunately, it's coming up as zero parts per million. Oh, that's good. Okay. And it should always be zero. Ah. Uh, carbon monoxide is a poison. Uh -huh. And yes, if you stand behind a car and do this, you'll get a reading because carbon monoxide is coming out of the car. And hopefully people don't stand behind a car for more than a few moments. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, for the most part in our lives, we're going to be exposed to brief amounts of carbon monoxide. But once it starts to accumulate and you're there for a period of time, you, you're going to have the potential of severe headaches, mm -hmm. nausea, mm -hmm. dizziness. Um, and does this, would this accumulate like if if somebody is exposed to it for you know a low level for months at a time, does it make eventually make them sicker and sicker? Or it does. The good news appears to be that when you stop the source of the problem, the health gets reestablished very okay. quickly. So that's the good news because we do know from a woman in the town of Brookhaven who came to one of our meetings where she said, you know, I got the home energy audit done. Mm -hmm. And um, they told me I had a carbon monoxide leak in the stove, so we replaced the stove. Mm -hmm. And uh, she said she never made the connection at first, but then months later realized her son, who had for years suffered from severe migraines, wow. never had a migraine again. Wow. And she had taken him to every doctor. Sure. And so this raises the issue of and doctors. And I'm sure the doctors you know. don't think about that. They really don't, but you know, the New England Journal of Medicine, several other major mm -hmm. medical uh, journals have written articles attempting to educate doctors how, mm -hmm. hey, be aware that these various symptoms can be caused by low-level carbon monoxide uh, mm -hmm. exposure. But then, of course, if you don't have the digital readout, how would you know you have a low yeah. level in your 
living environment. Right, because um, it only goes off if it's uh, if you're it only goes done. off at seventy. Right. It's based on a, you know, yeah. and, and actually they used to go off at early, lower numbers, and they raised it because they were going off too frequently, and the fire departments were getting called frequently. Ah. Now, of course, we don't want the fire department to be called for something that's not an emergency mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. it's an important service, and we don't right. want to, you know. But at the same token, that tells us that there's a problem there's a there. Problem, These right. detectors are going off too frequently. So the, the nice in-between position is we can have the ones that go off at 70. So this will sound alarm at 70. But below 70, you can just walk up to it, touch it, and it'll give you a reading. And you know, this could have helped Steve Nelson, mm -hmm. uh, the manager who died at sure. Walt Whitman Mall, because he apparently was sick for a week, from right. what I understand. And, uh, you know, <coughs> heard this story, you never know if it's all accurate, mm -hmm. but from what I understand, he was sick, and the doctor couldn't explain what the cause of the illness was. Now, you're going to work every day, and your work environment is making you sick. Mm -hmm. If people know that bad air quality could be the cause, mm -hmm. and we have a detector like this, they can walk up to a detective, test it, and say, you know, I've been having these headaches, mm -hmm. and maybe there's something going on. Yeah. And it's it's cheap, it's in its, yeah. you know, very inexpensive, readily available. Right. Area, area stores. Right. I encourage everybody that's watching the program, yeah. buy one of these and put and, them in the house. And, and I think we have to underscore there is no other way to tell that there is carbon monoxide it's in your It's either got to be the digital seat. readout detector or you get a carbon monoxide test as part of a home energy audit. Okay. But of course that will be done once and then the problem could develop a year or so right. afterwards. You're not going to do that right. every year. But I mean, you know, you're not going to smell it and I do want to underscore that. I mean, yes. obviously, and I, I said I had a gas stove. When you turn on the stove, you smell the gas. Right. But if there's a carbon monoxide leak, you're not going to have that odor. No. So you're not going to know that it's in your house unless you have a detector like this. That's right. That's so that's right. that's why these are so important. You know, and um, you know, you, you know, we submitted a list of ten recommendations. Yes. We, we spoke before the health mm -hmm. committee of the Suffolk County Legislature. Right. Um, one of the other points is is the first responders. Right. So someone from EMT, the ambulance personnel, comes to a facility. Now they came because they, in the case of the Walt Whitman uh, tragedy, they were told that a woman. Um, bumped her head and fell down the stairs. That she was bleeding from her head, fell down the stairs. Mm -hmm. So they're assuming it's a fall mm -hmm. kind mm -hmm. of situation. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, what happened was the gas was so overwhelming that it caused the woman to pass out and fall mm -hmm. down the stairs. Mm -hmm. And as they came to rescue her, they start passing out. Mm -hmm. So 28 oh people ended up going to the hospital really? that night. And you know, 20. Did the other um, restaurant workers? I'm, I'm also go to the yeah, a number of the other workers did. Yeah. The restaurant was full. The people didn't. So yeah. the gas was still in the basement, basically. Okay, I see. And the uh, the unit was in the basement, the mm -hmm. hot water heater. Um, and you know that is common. That it'll stay pretty much where it is, mm -hmm. unlike smoke, which rises. Mm -hmm. um, carbon monoxide doesn't quite do that, of mm -hmm. course. Uh, you know, so that's why they'll say you should have them on each level of your mm -hmm. home. Okay. Uh, you sh and you clearly need to have them near the uh, sources of the right. combustion. Mm -hmm. You're generally about eight to ten feet away. Okay. Um, you don't if you don't put it like right over a stove mm -hmm. that might trigger it more right, frequently. Right, right. But you, you know, eight to ten feet away, mm -hmm. every floor of your house okay. within about eight feet of the bedrooms because people can sleep through buzzers. Um, so you don't want it to be too far away from the bedrooms. Right. Um, that is state law today, and many people are living in homes that are not complying with state law. For the most part, no one's going to come into your home and inspect right. your home. So it's a homeowner's responsibility. Right. If you're the owner of the house, it's your responsibility to the safety of everybody in your house to have a carbon monoxide detector. The good news is you don't have to pay an electrician to wire it into the ceiling, which is a, right. that would be ideal with new construction, mm -hmm. but you can buy one of these and just, as we said right. earlier, just plug it right into wherever you find an open outlet, just plug it there or put it wherever you want yeah. to put And I know one of the uh, points of the 10-point plan was to um, get the uh, first responders to they also have it on their back. You know, yeah. to alert them to the fact that... Because they may not know. Right. So usually one person in, the, like, the fire chief will have mm -hmm. a carbon monoxide. Because they get a lot of carbon, carbon monoxide. is a very frequent call that mm -hmm. fire departments get. Um, as a matter of fact, some 20,000 people go to emergency rooms every year for carbon monoxide wow. poisoning. This is not That's like a national okay. number. Okay. Now, granted, a lot of that is car-related. So if mm -hmm. you bring a car into a 
garage right. and it's running in the garage, that is a definite source of carbon yeah. dioxide pollution and not a good thing to do if the mm -hmm. garage is part of the house. Mm -hmm. um, if it was properly constructed, that room is supposed to, that garage is supposed sealed. to be really sealed. Mm -hmm. But still, it clearly, if you're leaving a car running mm -hmm. in a garage that's part of your house, that's a danger. You're sending right. carbon dioxide through the house. Mm -hmm. So things like that are, are frequently part of the um, problem. But um, of, of the 20,000 that end up in emergency rooms, some 400 people die every year of carbon monoxide exposure, poisoning. Um, of that 400 number, approximately 170 is not car related. Um, and so that's what we're talking about here is, mm -hmm. is the significant number of people who have uh, bad experiences in buildings and homes. Mm -hmm. And only like half the states in the country have the law, which is called the Manders Law in New York State, that requires carbon monoxide detectors in all homes oh, really? and buildings where there's sleeping, such as mm -hmm. hotels and dormitories. And of course, Brookhaven is now looking to expand that law, which would mm -hmm. be good. It should really be every building mm -hmm. that has a combustion source in it. So right. it should be every building. Mm -hmm. It should also be that it's a digital readout detector. Mm -hmm. um, at least one of them, of the, mm -hmm. if you're going to have more than one in the building, at least one should have that digital readout so mm -hmm. you can check. Um, particularly, uh, you know, uh, just from this perspective of you're a homeowner, you're in the house, it's a long winter, you're you know, spending mm -hmm. out, you should be able to check Absolutely. to make sure that everybody's And how much is this, this one? Charged? This one was 35. That's We've seen them as little as uh, yeah. under 20. Wow. So it's not yeah. a big expense. No. Um, when I was originally researching this, I got the misinformation. I'd seen a couple that were like $250 or so, mm -hmm. and people were making the argument that you have to hardwire them with electricians mm -hmm. so that it was a significant expense. Mm -hmm. And as I've learned more, I realized, mm -hmm. no, it's not that significant. Right? So it's not an issue with existing buildings. Mm -hmm. So anybody that's a business person who is um, responsible for the business, whether it's the boss or the landlord, mm -hmm. you know, don't wait for the law to minimum. change. Yeah, yeah, just yeah, go yeah. out and yeah. get it and just give yourself that peace just of mind. Just everybody's peace of mind. That's right. You invest $35 in a, a digital rehab. I mean, and right now, as exists today, schools, businesses mm -hmm. are not required to have any monitor at all. And so you could have the tragedy that happened at mm -hmm. Legal Seafood and no one broke the law. Right, right. You know, which tells you the law is inadequate, mm -hmm. and that's why the town's looking to change the law, mm -hmm. which we definitely support. Right. But we do think that there's a broader issue here sure. of overall maintenance, mm -hmm. where um, many uh, heating system. you know, the tragedy occurred towards the end of the heating season, where we had a really bad mm -hmm. winter. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's uh, surprising, right? because what happens is the heating system starts to build up soot inside ah. of it. And they, you get this backdraft effect, you get this incomplete combustion, mm -hmm. and you can have problems with the system. So you really, we want to establish a rule for all municipal buildings. You can easily establish such a rule that says we're going to have heating systems cleaned every year at the beginning sure. of the season. Mm -hmm. Basic practice. Um, but as we start to do that, then we should carry that over to places where there's greater risks. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things is we have programs to help people who are, um, you know, financially, they're poor, they're working poor, they're working hard, mm -hmm. trying to pay the bills, mm -hmm. and then what do they see? They, their energy bills are shooting through the roof. Mm -hmm. So there are some programs that help pay for heat, he, yes, heat oil, yes. programs mm -hmm. like REAP. Yep. Um, REAP we think those programs should include, if you're going to give them some, uh, some oil to get through the cold winter, mm -hmm. you need to take into consideration a large possibility that they weren't able to afford a cleaning of the system, right. and maybe they're system is on its last mm -hmm. leg, what it's mm -hmm. been operating mm -hmm. years beyond its, mm -hmm. its expiration. Mm -hmm. And so we think that it should come with a, if you're in REAP, we think you should be able to get an annual tune-up and cleaning of your system and a testing to make sure that there's right. no carbon monoxide coming off of it. Um, and so, you know, there's certain basic practices that are kind of sure. common sense sure. that we think can come out of this. Right. Um, but it also goes further. You, you um, joked about, you know, cracking a window mm -hmm. in a house, you know, so mm -hmm. you try and make a house nice and tight mm -hmm. and then, but then you say, gee, I want fresh air. Yeah, yes. And I'm with you on that. We yeah. do want fresh air. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, hospitals actually measure the level of heat ex of air exchange, how mm -hmm. quickly air exchange is in the hospital. Mm -hmm. um, and if you look at the law closely, homes also have a standard for air exchange. Mm -hmm. In the past, this way in which no one enforces it for the mm -hmm. most part. Mm -hmm. uh, in the past, the way that was achieved was just on the assumption that the house wasn't well leaky. insulated. Right. The house yes. is leaking. Yes. The air is slipping yes. in through the walls, uh -huh. around windows, sure. and stuff. So as we're getting tighter, we really should be looking at systems that have um, an air exchange mechanical mm -hmm. system in the house. Mm -hmm. So it, for many homes, all they do, like energy store homes, is they'll have a uh, 
uh, like a, 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 a fan in your bathroom, mm -hmm. to have one of those fans designed with a timer to go on every so often just to keep air moving in and out. Mm -hmm. We think that's a step in the right direction, but it should go a little bit further. Mm -hmm. It should actually be a mechanical air exchange system that goes right to the outside and pulls the fresh air in at the right rate. And, and the fresh it, air would be pulled in by the furnace, is that Yeah, true? what you want to do is then run some of the heat pipes alongside right. of okay. it so you get a heat exchange sure. with the air exchange right. so that as the air comes in, it's not cold air. Right. And um, there's ways to do that. Mm -hmm. um, clearly, you know, that's a little bit more involved. Do most of our new homes have that or not Most yet? of them don't. Really? Mm -hmm. And really they should, and most buildings don't. Like mm -hmm. I say, hospitals all do. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's something that the state of building science says this is appropriate at this point, mm -hmm. but construction hasn't quite caught okay. up with the thinking. So that's why when we wrote our list of 10 recommendations, we kind of right. put that one at the top. Does any kind of state require that? No. None? No. Okay. And frankly, if we were to do a law in the town of Brookhaven that requires um, carbon monoxide monitors in all buildings mm -hmm. and requires that all buildings have at least one carbon monoxide detector that has the digital readout. Mm -hmm. um, that would be a first in the nation mm -hmm. kind mm -hmm. of rule. So mm -hmm. we really want to see us go in that direction. Mm -hmm. It'll help people who might have migraine problems for a long period of time mm -hmm. and never knew what it was. Right. Um, but it also kind of drive people towards making their systems more energy efficient and, and making sure they're being maintained properly, cleaned annually. Mm -hmm. And if it is an old heating system, it might help nudge them. If someone sees that they have a certain mm -hmm. amount of poison they're living with every day, that might motivate you to say, you know what, let's get that heating system changed, whereas right. you might have put it off yeah, otherwise. Sure, sure. So we think this is connected to the broader issue of energy efficiency and our efforts to make homes greener and, mm -hmm. and, and reduce our carbon footprint. And mm -hmm. um, you know, also this is a good thing from the perspective of local green jobs. You know, you can't sure. change a heating system or put insulation in your attic by having someone do it in Canada or India. Uh -huh. It has it's to be right local jobs. That's right. you know? yes. And, and yeah. I know you're a big proponent yeah. of that program. And that's mm -hmm. what, some of the reasons this program is great. And now we have another whole aspect of it, which is health. And mm -hmm. um, we should see, you know, a green home as a healthy home. Healthy home, right. You know, and uh, it, it'll go a long way towards, uh, you know, mm -hmm. people have illnesses, uh, respiratory illnesses. Mm -hmm. If they have young people, uh, pregnant women, you yeah. really should make sure you're living in a house right. that's not hitting you with carbon monoxide. Yeah. It, it's, yeah. it's like smoking a pack of cigarettes mm -hmm. every day. Mm -hmm. um, cigarettes do give carbon monoxide off. They're a combustion uh -huh. source. So, you know, but in those cases, Some people, people made really those. Yeah, they made that choice. On purpose. Yes. yes. And of course there's yeah. an element of addiction in terms uh -huh. of nicotine. Right. Here with, you know, this is a situation where there's no choice because they're not aware. Mm -hmm. And we want people to be aware. We want them to be able to mm -hmm. see the digital readout mm -hmm. and say, oh, you know, we have a problem here. I keep testing this. It's consistently been zero everywhere I go. Mm -hmm. um, I get a kick out of the fact I'm able to take it with me because it has batteries in it. Um, but I was in one restaurant where it came up at 30. And wow. You know, so that can make the workers sick. Yeah. Um, you know, so. Did you tell the owners? Hopefully, I won't ask the name of the restaurant. Uh, yeah, it was actually in Washington D.C. Oh, okay. Yeah, but we, we can wow. sort of start to point it out, and uh -huh. people don't understand. And, uh huh. You know, but uh, um, hopefully, we can start to um, to make people aware. And and as you, as we said earlier, sometimes tragedies are mm -hmm. a way in which government becomes aware of a problem mm -hmm. and it takes action. And as mm -hmm. I said. Uh, 20 years ago, when Venus Gerolides died on Long Island, it did result in legislation, mm -hmm. and we do now have laws that at least required it in the homes, mm -hmm. which again, you know, we don't think are being enforced for most homes. Mm -hmm. uh, it may be enforced at the point of sale, right. but even that I'm not so sure about. Mm -hmm. um, certainly with new construction, they're put into, so, mm -hmm. you know, but new construction represents a small percentage of the overall number of homes. Mm -hmm. um, but now, because the digital is available, which it wasn't 20 years ago, mm -hmm. we think we need to take it a step further. And as I say, we have various medical journals and a lot of evidence mm -hmm. that low level can be a source of significant health problems. Mm -hmm. And not to mention that story of one of the people that lives in your town told us that after they got this test done of a, of a home energy audit, yeah. the, the son's right. uh, problems were solved. Right. And you don't have to take them to all these specialists. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, and some doctors are aware, to be fair, to the doctors because there are all these medical journals mm -hmm. that have made this point, but most mm -hmm. people aren't going to make the connection. Right. They're mm -hmm. just going to think, oh, it's something going around. Right, you know, right. It's not something going around. It's your right. house making you sick. Yeah, yeah. Uh, or your workplace I'm making sure you they, sick. they uh, prescribed all kinds of medication and uh, everything else for this youngster. It was carbon monoxide. It was carbon monoxide.
Mm-hmm. All right, you know, when should people um, uh, ensure that their carbon monoxide uh, detectors are actually working right. and measuring, you know, right. the amount of carbon? Well, there is this um, general sort of reminder concept out there to say mm-hmm. check the batteries in your smoke detectors every six months when it comes time to change your clocks, push them ahead or push them back. Um, and so we think that rule should extend over to the carbon mm-hmm. monoxide detector. Um, yes, it has batteries as a battery backup, so check the batteries. But the other part of it is check to see if you have one to begin with. Yeah. And if you do have one, how old is it? Right. If it's more than five or seven years old, odds are it needs to be replaced. Okay. Um, and in fact, if it went off several times, where it sounded the alarm several mm-hmm. times, it may need to be replaced. Mm. Um, and you probably don't have the digital readout one mm-hmm. that, that it's the newer models that mm-hmm. are available. So it's a good time to say, right. hey, let's okay. take a look at what's going on. And they're inexpensive, so that's why I want to underscore that again. Really? Uh, I you mean, know. it's certainly a worthwhile investment to ensure that your family is, uh, is safe and, and healthy. It's a lot cheaper than going to doctors yes. and taking medicine to try and solve yes. a, a headache problem mm-hmm. that could be because your house is mm-hmm. making you sick. And, mm-hmm. and there's a range of other illnesses people could be walking around with. and. Uh, so yeah, I was expecting the main argument to be, oh, it's too expensive, and, mm-hmm. and we have to wire it into the ceiling, and I have mm-hmm. high ceilings, and mm-hmm. none of that matters. It's very mm-hmm. simple. You could do it, mm-hmm. you know, a quick stop off at the at the local hardware store or Home Depot right. or Lowe's or such, and uh, mm-hmm. and boom, you can plug it in in a moment, mm-hmm. and uh, and then test yourself anytime you think that something could be going on. You know, if the heating se- season starts to drag on, we have a bad heating season like mm-hmm. we had where it was really mm-hmm. cold. Well, that unit is really working hard. Yes. All the more reason you want to test it mm. and see if it's been spitting out some mm. carbon monoxide because there's a backdraft, because it sure. doesn't have good oxygen flow. Mm. Maybe uh, maybe there's boxes near the unit. There's mm. a number of things that can cause these sure. problems. You could have a situation with a chimney. Um, chimneys get yeah. get uh, you know blocked. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, just, they should be cleaned regularly. Um, you can have situations in the garage where the garage uh, is attached to the house and maybe mm-hmm. you don't realize it and people have started mm-hmm. a bad practice of warming up the car, mm-hmm. turning it on in the garage, mm-hmm. things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, heating heaters that people use, propane heaters. Mm-hmm. So there's a number of things that can be the source. Mm-hmm. And just like with the story of Vetus gerolitis, who would think of a pool mm-hmm. heater yeah. as something no that one. can kill somebody? Yeah. So on some level, it's, it's, it's hard to cover everything. Mm-hmm. So you know, get a home energy audit done. They will come and test all your systems in your house and get this digital readout detector for your home mm-hmm. and for your office. You know, if your boss doesn't do it, yeah. if the owner of the building, the landlord doesn't do it, mm-hmm. buy one yourself and so plug, it in right next to your, <laughs> plug it in right next to your desk. Yeah, yeah, what yeah. home is there? Yeah. You know, at least you have sure. a, a sense of, you know, yeah. and I think if people start doing this, it'll help prompt the law to be changed. You know, why wait for the law to be changed? Yeah. It doesn't cost much to bring it into work and just plug it in right next to your right. desk. And at least you have some sense that that that, uh, uh, that there's not a carbon monoxide exposure mm-hmm. problem in your work environment. Mm-hmm. All right, yeah. all right. I want to thank you, Neil. It's always thank informative you. to have you here at the town of Brooklyn. So Absolutely. thank you, and we will uh, work to try to move Good some coffee. of these uh, <laughs> move some of these changes forward. In the town. I love coffee. I love tea. I love the job the job and it loves me. Coffee and tea and the java and